In this video, we're going to look at introducing you to the concept of gradient and what is meant by the gradient of a straight line. Every straight line is unique and has its own features and characteristics that mark it out as different from other lines. And so as we look at the lines that are coming up on the screen just now, you'll see that they all differ in terms of their appearance. Now, as you think about what you saw, you will notice that some lines were uh, steeper than other lines. Some sloped up, some sloped down, some cut the y-axis at a certain point, others cut the y-axis perhaps further up or further down. And the same is true of where it cuts the x-axis. Now a line's steepness is just known as its gradient. That is what gradient means. It's a measure of the steepness of a line. So the gradient tells us how much a line slopes up or down as you move one unit along the horizontal axis. So if you look at this line, and as we consider how far up you go as you travel one box across or one unit across, you see that as we go one across, we go two up. One across, two up. So this is a line which is a gradient of two. Looking at this line, this line has a gradient of 1. Why? Well, as we go 1 across, we climb up 1. 1 across, 1 up. 1 across, 1 up. And so on. The letter M is used to represent gradient. The reason being that M stands for modulus, which is an alternative word for gradient. And the gradient of a straight line can be easily ca calculated just using the formula that the gradient is the vertical change over the horizontal change. The vertical change over the horizontal change. Or if you like, y is over 1 for short. m equals y is over 1. Now, it doesn't matter what part of a straight line you focus on. You can use any section of a straight line to find its gradient. Lines go on forever and we always look at a, a restricted section anyway. Now, as you look at that line, if we consider this section, the whole part of what we see, we see that the y's is 4, the 1 is 8. You've gone 4 across, 4, 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 8 across. So the gradient is 4 over 8, which is 1 over 2, or a half. Now you could leave your answer as a half, as a fraction, or 0 0.5. Both answers are perfectly acceptable. Looking at the same line, if we again focus on, this time focus on a, a smaller area, then what's our y's? We've climbed up 2. How far along have we come? What's our 1? We've come along by 4. So the gradient is y is over 1, which is 2 over 4, which again gives us an answer of a half. Looking at this line, consider the y's over the 1. You've climbed up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. You've come across 4 units. So your y's is 6, your 1 is 4, and you can simplify that gradient to 3 over 2, which is the same as 1.5. Here, you've got the same line. Again, if we focus on a smaller section, your y's is 3, your 1 is 2, so the gradient of y's over 1, 3 over 2, which is what we had in the previous slide. Now, as we look at these four lines, you may wish to pause the video and consider what the gradient of each line is by rem remembering the formula y is over 1. Having done that, you should have found the answers to be 4, 2, 1 and 1 third. And you should see there that the lines with the lar larger gradients are those which are steepest. You see there the blue line is the steepest line. And this is the line which is the highest or the largest gradient. The green line is the line which is least steep. And this is the line which has the smallest gradient. So the steeper the line, the larger the gradient. The gradient is a measure of steepness. Now, not every line slopes up the way. Some lines slope down the way. So, if that is the case, the line will always have a negative gradient. 
And although we call the formula y is over 1 for short, remember it's the vertical change over the horizontal distance. So although I've written down y is over 1, really it's not a y is anymore, it's a fall. You're coming down from left to right by negative 4. Your 1, as you come across the way, is 6. And that simplifies to give you negative 2 over 3. Here, if we look at another line, we see what is the vertical change. From left to right, you have come down 6 boxes. As you come along, you've come along by 3. So your y's is actually a fall of negative 6. Your 1 is 3. So negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So remember, lines which slope up the way have a positive gradient. Lines which slope down the way have a negative gradient. What about lines which are horizontal? So if we look at this line here, what can you see about a line that's neither climbing up nor sloping down? Well, let's take our formula, y is over 1. What have you risen by? You haven't risen at all. So your y is 0. Your 1 is 8 in this part of the graph that we're looking at. 0 divided by 8 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. So all, vert all horizontal lines have a gradient of 0. What about vertical lines? If you're climbing up vertically, what can you say about the gradient? Well, again, let's take our formula. y is over 1. Now, in this section, our y is 8. Our 1 is 0. We're not moving across at all. And you cannot divide by 0. So we say that all vertical lines have an undefined gradient. So horizontal lines have a gradient of 0. Vertical lines have a gradient which is undefined. What can you say about these three lines? What's similar about them? It's not their length. This green one is shorter. But if you look closely, you'll see that although they are different in length, they are all sloping up at the same weight. So in other words, they're all parallel. Each line is sloping up at the same weight. So, what can we say? The gradient of the red line is 8 over 2, which is 4. The gradient of the blue line is also 8 over 2. Y is over 1. 8 over 2, which is 4. The gradient of the green line is Y is over 1. So, 4 over 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So, what conclusion can we make about parallel lines? Parallel lines have the same gradient. And if ever you're asked to prove that lines are parallel, that is a clue that should make you go and find the gradient of each line. And if you find that the lines are the same in terms of their gradient, then you have proof that they are parallel. And that's it. That's your introduction to gradient.